Hey YouTube, um, today I have a video of this TV that I found on the side of the street this Monday. Um, I thought this looked interesting because of the fact that it looks pretty old. So all these knobs. There's a digital clock actually built into it when you turn it off it turns on there's all your adjustment knobs and the neck auto color NEC yeah I thought this was an interesting TV um, right now I have the back off I have the cover for it it's right here um, yeah, it also has the external speakers. Video inputs, antenna inputs, even a UHF screw type input. What I'm trying to figure out is, this thing, when you turn it on, it has vertical lines that run across the top of the screen here. And they have about, just like the other, I, ha I also picked up another TV that's actually in the living room right now. It has the same problem. That one I picked up first. And I, we uh, already got a capacitor for that. Probably gonna try to get that in because it actually is a capacitor that causes this. And the one in the living room, we're gonna. It's a, it's a newer Toshiba from about 2006, but uh, it's, it's a tube TV, 27 inch. But it uh, it does the same thing as this one. Now, I'm not going to power this one up right now because it's all apart. I got the board unscrewed and everything, so. But I thought it was interesting. This one had the same exact problem when I turned it on. Not to mention, also, I had to cut cords, so I had to put a connector on it. The cord was cut right there, so. But anyways, it does power up. Um, It does turn on. It's a fuzzy screen, whatever. Speakers work. You have doors on them. Same thing for the other side. But yeah, it's it's it was. I thought it was kind of funny. I had the same problem, so I figured, eh, maybe it's a capacitor too. So I looked it up, and it appears that this thing does have a problem with the capacitors going bad. I control the vertical circuit. And they also cause lines to appear at top screen and fo vertical fold over, which should be the screen rolling, basically. Because one in the living room does that, the one other one I picked up. But that's all leads to that one capacitor, which I think I we have the right one, and I think it should work once we put it in. But in the meantime, we got this one out here too, sitting here. I'm trying to figure out which. W I already found the one on the other TV, I think, because they had pictures of it online. But this one. Since it's so old, it's from 1984, no one has pictures of it. So therefore, I have to find the capacitor myself. I got the number, it's supposed to be a 160 volt, 22 microfarad capacitor. But I can't find it. I think I might have found it. I'm just not sure. I'm thinking it's that one. Right next to that heat sink, right there. It's probably that one. Right there, almost touching the heat sink. Next to that other big one. There's two right next to each other, right there. It's the one to the left. Towards this piece of metal. I think it's a heat sink, but 
what probably happened is that thing got hot and it damaged the capacitor over the years it was working. Same thing with the one in the living room, it also was next to a heat sink. So it wasn't the greatest design. I don't see any other capacitors touching the heat sink, so. And that one does read 160 on the top, but I cannot see the microfarad rating because it's behind here. And I need a mirror or something, but I don't have one out here right now, so. I think that's it. I think that's it right there. So yeah, um, just thought I'd let you guys know what's going on here. Tube. Speakers. Over there. Power supply capacitor. That's one of the biggest capacitors in there right there. So yeah, I think it's that one, but I cannot find out for sure if that's it.